They were the annoying anti-piracy ads we were forced to watch back in the DVD days, reimagined for the housing crisis. It's again probably a campaign run by a group of people living in, whether it's in Melbourne or Sydney, who are frustrated about the housing situation. It's holiday maker heaven. Farm stays, beach shacks, inner city suites as far as the thumb can scroll. But at what cost? I mean, we're seeing lines of 50 and 60 and 70 uh, people queuing up to uh, inspect a property and to rent it. And that's um, obviously creating a lot of frustration and a lot of worry for a lot of people as well. With Australia's rental crisis deepening, all eyes are on the prolific Airbnb market. The short stay industry had peaked just before the pandemic and really that peak hasn't dropped off. That's a lot of stock that could be used for rental properties. Rental vacancies reached record lows last month. At the same time, new rental listings dropped dramatically in our most populated cities. And many believe this has a lot to do with it. Those ominous red dots pocked across Sydney and Melbourne, they're all Airbnbs and they're all over the country. We've left it unregulated for far too long. And what that's meant is that as property has become a, a great investment, we've seen more property investors actually invest in second homes, which they're financing by renting to tourists. Last year, Byron Bay brought in regulations to restrict holiday letting to 180 days a year. Victoria is under pressure to do the same or roll out a tourist tax for Airbnb customers. But they're small steps compared to places like Amsterdam, San Francisco and London. In Amsterdam, up to 30 nights in a year. In San Francisco, it's up to three months, similarly in London. And that's a way of making sure that home sharing platforms are really about home sharing. They're not about uh, decreasing the rental stock. So while Airbnb is a legitimate business model, is it the one Australia needs to keep a roof over its head? Airbnb Australia's Susan Wilden joins us now. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, do you have official data on how many Airbnbs are across Australia right now? Because we've seen various estimates, some saying 100,000, others saying up to 400,000. It's a really great question and I think it's important to look across the whole sector, not just at Airbnbs. So what we know is there's around 200 to 250,000 short-term rental accommodations across Australia. And what that represents is about 1 to 2 per cent of the entire housing supply that Australia has. So it's actually quite a small number when you put in perspective of the entire housing supply. Isn't the bottom line though, Susan, that every single house that is on the market for Airbnb is off the market for rentals? and therefore drive for rents up. Isn't really that just an inescapable mathematical fact? It's actually a really great point. Not all houses on Airbnb sit on there all of the time. A good number of them are actually people's primary place of residence and they're renting it out when they go away on holidays or when they go away for business. They're also renting out granny flats, they're renting out private rooms. So it's not entire, entire homes doesn't just mean this is a rental that isn't on the long-term rental market. Sure, okay, so that's an important qualification. Can you give us what proportion would be homes that are not the primary occupier? So like just spare homes, people have holiday homes, whatever. Um, that would be available for rent if they weren't be on, on Airbnb. So we don't have that number, obviously, because we don't work across the whole industry. And that's why we're so keen to get statewide regulation like we have in New South Wales and Tasmania. So the government has a really clear, transparent and accurate look at what the entire industry has across. I understand Airbnb would support a tourist tax, which would essentially funnel money into local infrastructure. But how would that help in terms of rental availability? So what it would do is our view is that that money should be used to support housing projects. So think of it for building key worker housing or social and affordable housing done at a local council level. So it actually uses the money that's brought in by tourism. It doesn't impact um, stopping tourism coming into the town, which is a really important lifeline for a lot of towns, but enables that local council to funnel that into building new houses, which is what's so critically needed. Uh, we've seen regulation elsewhere. Places like Amsterdam, for example, came up with quite a strict regime. That led to an 80% decrease in property listings on Airbnb. Um, would you support measures like we've seen in those sort of countries introduced here? So we've actually got some measures with the New South Wales government that includes a nightcap. And that is all about making sure that Airbnb and short-term rentals are fit for purpose in the areas that they are located in. So we're always really keen to continue partnerships with governments and other stakeholders to make sure it works for everyone. Do you think Amsterdam went too far? I think it's really important to note that Airbnb was actually created during the GFC by two guys who couldn't pay their rent and they rented out air mattresses on their floor. A lot of people are turning to Airbnb to rent out their spare rooms, their granny flats when they're away on holidays to help 
offset the rising cost of living. To put that in perspective, uh, an average private room host across Australia earned $4,000 last year, and that's about the equivalent of three weeks of median wage. So we want to make sure that we're enabling Aussies to really be able to help offset the rising cost of living without penalising them as well. Sure, and I reckon no one would have a problem if that was all that Airbnb was doing, or even the bulk of it. But I just want to return to the Amsterdam situation. Do you think Amsterdam went too far? Would you support that sort of regulation introduced here? I think regulation is really important to be done on a state-by-state state, uh, level, and that's because you really need to understand how many there are. So I can't speak to Amsterdam, but what I can say is when we have worked with the New South Wales and Tasmanian government, it's been very unique to their circumstances and what works for, for them there. So is there any intention from Airbnb to rein in the number of properties listed on the platform? One of the things that we have done is we're, ad we're actively moving towards encouraging people to rent out their private rooms. And part of that is there's 13 million private rooms sitting across Australia. So what we're doing is really encouraging Aussies to use the space that they already have to give other Aussies the opportunity to travel and to really connect with hosts where they are. So if Airbnb became a thing where you were only renting out spare rooms in your house or the house that you live in when you happen to be away, would Airbnb survive as a business? Absolutely. So there are 1.4 billion check-ins for Airbnb across the world. This is a really loved uh, program. I'll give, you, I'll give you one example. I'm from a small town of 160 people. There is one Airbnb there. There would never be a need for a hotel there. And it allows people to travel in LA and to support tourism there. So the need will be there. So they're also, that's why we want to make sure that we're balancing so that we can provide that service. Um, now, before we get out of here, it's very rare I get to talk to someone from Airbnb. Um, <laughs> how can I get a bad review from my profile? There was a Bucks party I organised in Molly Mook. Um, <laughs> things were said. Can you help me out, Susan? I think maybe stop throwing parties. We do have a party house band, so maybe you're in breach of that one, but I'm yeah, sure to look into it for you. What's a party, you know? Before you know it, you're having a few drinks. It's hard to define a party, right? I think when the SWAT team arrives, that's when you've overdone it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you've read my profile. That's good. It's a pretty low bar, Sammy. Uh, Susan, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.